On today's episode of Identity, chatting with us in our coffee shop this morning is the founder of One Way Up Productions, Zahir Kasim. We then head to Winterfell to dance with the Golden Youth Club. What's Happening features the review of a cooking app, Yum Yum. We also check out a Rastafarian documentary entitled Roaring Lion. And Prime Circle plays us out with doors. An individual with an imagination My inner faith illuminates innovations In a space with infinite inspiration I was born free from all incarceration Incredible, living infallibly Intelligent, outshine with my inner being This is me, impeccable as ever been I am you, you are me This is my identity Good morning. It's 11 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Lokshogutsi skatse se identity lagu SABC One. Minel kama ngingpu mi wagambete. Kuko na logo shali se patsele go na go identity golel viglel dago. Ye pa tafu na shali ulinze. Before we kickstart today's show, World Creativity and Innovation Day will be observed on April 21st across the world. And the goal is to build capacity for everyone to be open to new ideas and to make new decisions that make the world a better place. For some business, we need to learn a lot of things again. Look for a card sitting all over your impact to one guy. But being in your little lane, a pansy with two bullets, say go cut me bono, ye go cut like sasa little card degile. And on today's episode. We have a man who has managed to be innovative by generating new ideas in business. His name is Zahir Kasim and he's settling down for coffee with me. Do join us. Zahir Kasim graduated from Columbia's Graduate School of Journalism with a Master's in Digital Media. He is a co-founder of One Way Up Productions and he's also on Forbes Africa list of entrepreneurs under the age of 30. Zahir, that's a bit of a long intro there you've got. Welcome to Identity. Thanks. Pleasure to be here. I want to understand where your love for journalism started. Um, as a young man, um, you know, I was at university and I didn't have a lot of friends. And I found my way into the radio station. And, um, you know, in order to be a DJ, you have to work in another department. Mm -hmm. And all the department, departments were full except uh, news. So I said, let me take a whack at it. Because you know, I thought I was going to be a DJ and you know, talking and all of that. But you know, I have to jump through these hurdles. Mm -hmm. And I started working in news, and I just fell in love with it. You studied in New York. What is the media um, spectrum like there compared to South Africa? It's very innovative. It's very cutthroat. Mm. Um, you know, you've got to be the best in your game, especially to live and survive in New York. And you'll find that uh, after a couple of years. It's taken a toll on you. So a lot of people go there; they work there, you know, for, you know, like I said, three, four, five years, and then they leave just because the pace is, is too much for them. So the journey to going towards New York, starting back here at home. Where did you grow up? What was your childhood like? Grew up in an area called Mayfair. Uh, it was a predominantly Indian area, um, and as I grew older, we moved to Houghton. And I went to government school, and I finally graduated from Crawford um, in matric. And throughout my years, I was a very average student, and very like under the radar. And uh, you know, most people did, wouldn't even have guessed that I had the opportunity to go overseas and study. So. Life works out like that. Media can be very competitive, um, not only as journalists or media practitioners of all sorts. How do you stay rooted in your pursuit? You know, I'd say religion has played a huge part in this. Um, you know, I'm Muslim, so one of the tenets of Islam is to treat everybody with respect. Um, and I found that in this industry, especially people on the top, they, they don't have a lot of time for. People at the bottom, or people that are growing, and I think that's unacceptable. I think it doesn't matter what business you're in; you treat everybody with equal amount of respect. You know, from the cleaner to the CEO, and that in itself will open up opportunities for you. You have a master's degree in digital media. The digital space is the fastest growing by far. So, how can we use uh, the growth of the digital media to enhance development in uh, in developing countries? 
Well, one way that we're doing it is uh, we've teamed up with um, the city of Twani. And we are, um, together with ECSWE and Connect Up, um, what we're doing is we've given the people of Twani free Wi-Fi in areas like Mamalodi, Shoshenguva, Etridgeville, and the CBD. And by giving free Wi-Fi, you've already given people access to jobs, research, you know, all these kinds of things. What's your take on social media? I mean, we've got a section called, uh, a segment called What's Happening, where we review apps. And there are a lot of, um, for instance, I have a Bible app on my phone and we have the Quran available on, on applications. What's your view on social media and its influence on people in society? It's, it's an amazing tool to keep people connected, to see what's happening. I mean, now if you want to see what's happening in news, you go onto Facebook mm -hmm. and you see what your friends are saying and you see what they're posting. Um, it's an amazing tool, it's going to keep changing. What's hot today is not going to be hot tomorrow. And uh, I think everybody should run with it and use it, but use it cautiously. I wish we had more time. I want to play a quick game with you. If you were the captain of a ship, what would you call that ship? Uh, Nabila, after my wife. And if you were to join an emergency service, what role would you want to play? Paramedics, because they, in, you know, in a couple of minutes can, can make or break, save a life. And if you are a wrestler on one of those wrestling shows, what would your stage name be? Uh, I love The Rock. Oh, I think it's so cool. Zahir The Rock. It's yeah. been awesome having you on the show, Zahir. Thank you so much for your time and your insight. Thank you for having me. Nitiveli Ngaya Zahir, he has done really well for himself, having achieved so much. The sky does not seem to be the limit. Nyetemba nawe lapo ekaya, unetetegile wakutatega kufeza ako mapupo. Sisa chika ititolo, gepa unga inzawe ngoba masibu ya stofa kashela e Winterfeld. Lapo sibona i Golden Youth Club, isfunzi saguti kutansa ni mkulo gu wakanja ni mpagati. Unga inzawe. This is my identity. This is my identity. Thank you for tuning in to Identity right here on SABC One. I'm Bumimbete. If you've just joined us, you missed the first part of the show where we spoke to journalist and entrepreneur Zahir Kasim. But don't despair, we have loads of infotainment still to come, which includes a bit of breaking news. We thank you for constantly sharing your thoughts and stories with us. One such story now features an organization that is making a difference in the community through music and performing arts. A member of this organization, Liam Twaini, inboxed us on Facebook and her comment reads as follows. Hi Susan Pumi, my name is Liam Twaini and I would like to invite the identity team to my community in Winterfeld, where we uplift the community through music and dancing. We would like to share our story with the rest of the identity viewers. Looking forward to having you in Winterfeld, Pretoria. Lonvomba dana uvagala ati misele mbamba, ngalo msebendi lo mushe lo wendiwa inlanga no yake. Sis chable le sume mosake, sa baksha tikwama, sa pegi se mabombo e Winterfeld. Asmoge gutibu hambe njani. This is my identity. Sanbanan babugele makaya ika malam nyung le agam training shalala Winterfeld footing ililunga le Golden Youth Club eya kala usis no ma Johanna masangu sila nam sanjo kuzoboni sa ababugele ba identity guti senza gan jala gu Golden Youth Club ages babo. Stella Ustelega Banzinga called the New Club Guti Italegancha. He called the New Club, it was established in 2001, Konala in the dusty road of Winterfeld. Sitale like in Abantonaba eight and Bazanje for Uwenza Ama homework, then Nama indigenous games. But we decided which is better Uwenza e e traditional group or e dance group and then it's where by year started on. How did you discover your passion of uplifting youth and what other projects are you involved in? Okay, Minankulele Winterfeld, and then Winterfeld, it's well known as a 
a crime zone. When I grew up, everybody was teasing us. Masfunda Guamanyama area, Bastelo Guti, we are from the dusty road of Winterfeld, as in Guluben, which is notoriously known as a scandal. Like, no one believes in us. So, when you believe in yourself. So I decided, Guti, like, the upcoming generation, this must not affect them. And, like, they can get an opportunity to explore the talent. We are having another e project, ABZY, EPA Leader International, where we are having e exchange program Nama Chemeni, Brazil, Bosnia, and Belarus. Why is it important to give young people inspiration and hope? Uguti, when you don't have hope, you don't have a future. So if you give up on yourself, you give up on your entire life. So if you know Guti, there's a reason on a popular Iona in Slaven. You push no matter we are we people ground. Uncle Uncle Uyo Munto Ozo Ozo E fate. You are in Kula in Pila under the fate. So when there is no hope, he langas Guti. When things look down, I look up. We are here to learn uh, uh, and develop our own and to learn from the South African life and cultures and especially from the South African township culture. Um, I'm making special experience for my whole life as a volunteer worker at the Golden News Club. Um, while I'm working in different institutions, I'm learning more about the South African cultures. For example, now the children teach me how to sing South African songs. They teach me the language. They teach me the traditional dance. Why, like, who decided to join the Golden Youth Club? I join the Golden Youth Club because I'm being fun I'm a skills icon at the Golden Youth Club, and then I'm going to skills lawa now. How important is spirituality, especially when dealing with different kids from different backgrounds? See youth here in South Africa. We are not going to be able to do anything. We are not going to be able to do anything. We are not going to be able to do anything. What do you enjoy the most about the session you have with Golden Youth Club? What I enjoy the most is the activities that we are doing here in Golden Youth Club, like dancing, singing and performing art. And the food thing is that we are going to participate in the food thing in our life. Mzali, how is your child benefiting from this organization? I am a child who is a child who is a child who is a child. Good passion, as I am, and even that is into is in a society, and then back then, but good to gain in na bezala. But when you chola in fundo, ukloni, ukloni pa, but funda na ngamasigo. Ngoba abantu na bani ngi ta abasa zamasigo abo good back hamga api ba ya api kwenza galan. Na yo gay golden youth lap ng tempo guti ema kaya ni enjoy ile njong oba na mingi enjoy ile fuiting tanduk bonga abantu baga iti titu guzos baga shela lagu golden youth lap that is from me Liam Tony and the members of golden youth lap over to you si simple min studio bye bye. Yat fogotisa gubona bantu la basha bafunza kabantu getemzabo nangem vela piabo loko kusinige dal temba ngelik sasa lale live. If you've missed that insert, you can join our conversation on social media and share your views on anything that you've watched so far. Write to us on our email address, identitytvshow at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter and on Instagram at identitytvshow. You can also like our Facebook page, Identity TV Show. After this commercial break, we take a look at this week's cooking app, Yum Yum, and we preview a Rastafarian documentary, Unganyagat, Daupute. This is my identity. This is my identity. 
Welcome back to your only multi-faith show, Identity. In case you've just joined us, you've missed out on a very talented journalist and entrepreneur, Zahir Kasim, with his motivational talk. But you are just in time for What's Happening, where we get tips from a Yum Yum app and we review a Rastafari documentary, Roaring Lion. If you want to impress someone with your cooking skills, Yum Yum is a cooking app that will leave you cooking like a pro. It definitely caters for all you foodies. It provides healthy recipes for babies, weight watchers, and recipes for comfort food since winter is almost upon us. Let's take a look. Yum Yum Recipes has enough going for it to make you want to cook even more. It's a tasty compendium of recipes that will suit many different occasions and tastes. Starting out, you have a choice of sections to delve into. Main courses are the most noticeable, but you can easily switch over to meat and fish, salads and appetizers, or browse recipes for specific holidays. In each case, a tasty looking image is what's going to lure you in initially, with a swipe down taking you to the recipe. Each recipe is laid out step by step with plenty of pictures, ensuring you should always know what you're meant to be doing next. It's clearly laid out, meaning it's ideal for placing next to you while you're cooking. Browsing through the ingredients you need is just as simple, with the items listed out clearly, along with tick boxes so you can know what you've already got and what you still need. There's a choice of measurements as well. Alongside such information is a rough estimate of how long it will take to make the meal, how many people it will serve, and the nutritional information. I'd download this app right now if I were you. It's only available on app stores. Oh, my villain, I lamb. A bomb gum guns a go peg, a sewab a malulange. Uncle Vita taking up, Kukuben, Kapesha will port for. And that reminds me, a wise woman once said, Work smart, not hard. I'm definitely downloading this one. I hope you're doing the same. In this week's movie review, we take a look at a Rastafarian documentary, The Roaring Lion, which is about the development of Rastafarian movement and its recognition internationally. Let's check it out. Bring in the cheese with him. 144,000 elected saints. Black women and children numberless at the sun of the seashore. Crying out, Sila! Sila, Sia, Ija! Rastafari! Roaring Lion charts the growth and development of the Rastafarian movement and its founder, Leonard Howell. With interviews from the renowned academic scholar, Professor Barry Shabanis, and several of the movement's figures. The documentary details the movement's growth from a persecuted commune in the foothills of Pinnacle, Jamaica, to an internationally recognized movement. It also features the life of Marcus Garvey and his influence on black people's history and faith with his famous quote, Look to Africa, where a black shall be crowned, who is our redeemer and savior. This prophecy was fulfilled in 1930 when Emperor Haile Selassie was crowned the King of Kings and the Emperor of Ethiopia, Africa. This documentary is available online. Before we wrap up, it's time for that big announcement that I've been holding back since the start of the show. After two seasons of identity, including eight episodes of this current third season, I've come to learn and appreciate so much about our diverse and vibrant Rainbow Nation, from different faith communities, religions, organizations, to encountering inspiring and selfless individuals. It's certainly been a blessed and wonderful journey for me. Sadly though, it's time for me to say goodbye as I embrace new opportunities that await me in my media career. New beginnings come with changes and I'd like to formally introduce and welcome the new presenter of Identity, Fiwe Koala. So wonderful. So wonderful. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying that it's a journey. I'm not saying that But yeah, it's been um, an exciting journey for me. But I want to know what to expect from you? How do you feel? Oh my goodness, Konamanja, I'm really, really excited. I mean, this show is everything viewer and having to fill your shoes, such huge shoes for me. I mean, you've left such a huge gap for me to impress everyone. But I think the nice thing about a show like this is that you need to be authentic mm -hmm. and you need to speak from your heart. 
and I think uh, with the viewers as well, we know that with you, Mbomi, you've, you've learned to, you've, you've managed to do that so well. And I think for me, it's easy to step into those shoes because I know exactly what that is. Thank you so much. I'm hoping yeah. you set your own footprint. Of course, of course. But it is a multi-faith show mm. and um, we'd like to know about your beliefs and how, how that influences OV, where you said this is all V mm -hmm. So Uviwe grew up um, under a very strict religious household. I was born Catholic, bred Catholic throughout my whole life, primary and high school. And um, growing up, I learned to Wuti, it's not really about my religion as per se, but my spirituality. Mm -hmm. And I believe that spirituality is a living from your core, so it's about connection. And more than anything, that's what the human spirit is about. So for me, this is what I'm looking forward to on being on identity. Boom, you've asked so much about me, but I want to find out from you about your spiritual growth. I mean, you've been on identity. What spiritual growth have you got? And, you know, the multi-faith of the country, what, what's your perspective on it now? You know, coming to identity, I had I'd always co-hosted shows. I did Zoned with Boiti. I did Sescona with Tulu. So identity for me was finding my own identity, not only through faith, religion, um, and as you mentioned, encountering people of multiple faith and sure. belief. I learned that there are so many similarities in our diversity. Um, I found my own identity and I found that most importantly, it is about my relationship with God according to, like you said, spirituality and not necessarily what the world dictates. So I've, I've truly grown and I, I attribute my growth even in the media career to my time spent on identity, finding myself in the first season and growing with it. I would have loved to stay on, um, but I'm also embracing the changes that are coming with the growth that I've acquired. So for you specifically, the way forward right now onwards, what's up for Umpumimbet? I recently joined Likwala Kwala FM station um, in, during season two of Identity and I was co-hosting the afternoon drive show with uh, Shaba and I just got the opportunity to move from drive time to breakfast. And I studied journalism, so I've always wanted to tap into the different fields of, of, of media. And I'm also tapping into writing and print media. So there's growth that's happening on that side. And with growth, unfortunately, you have to let go of some other things so that you give way to new opportunities. And I'm very excited about that. Well, Mbumi, we are excited here for you on Identity and we wish you the best in your endeavors in the media career. I'll be watching and I wish you all the best for the rest of the season and many more seasons to come. Thank you, Mpumi. Thank you so much. For the last time, that's it from me, Mpumi Mbete. Ntanza kutatale lituba, gubonga mdenu wa amiti shobo nebangani, mpinza nbonge, nelitimba longele identity, gwangati ngulungulu, anganibusi sanjalo. Salea. As Mpumi walks through new doors, we wish her the best and we celebrate her with this music video and dedicated to her, it's Prime Circle with The Doors. Enjoy. Enjoy.